Hello, my front porch friend. I sure am glad that you could just sit down with me tonight here on the big rock, right here at the rock hole. I'm out here at the creek, of course, and uh, the sun's going down. Birds are starting to come out, crickets. And it's just such a good time to just be out here. I was thinking this week when I was out in the early morning, I was just watching the wind blowing through the trees and I was just looking at the birds flying and the little insects just crawling everywhere. And I was just thinking, you know, it's so good for us to just get out of our little boxes, whether it's at our house or our apartment or our condo, just get outside. Go out in the front yard, go in the backyard, just go somewhere, get outside. Because when you get out there, you realize the reason it's so compelling, the reason the sounds pull us in, the reason we find peace here is because God is all around us here. I was reading this week. I'm going to read it to you. It's in 1 John, the first chapter. And it says this. Listen, because I've got a word for you about this in a minute. It says, in the beginning was the word. That's Jesus. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In fact, I'm going to have to read it to you because it's so good. I don't want to miss a word of it. It says... And God created everything through him, through Jesus. And nothing was created except through him. And the word gave life to everything that was created. I love that. The word gave life to everything that was created. The word Jesus gave life to everything that we see right here. Everything that moves, this water, this air, these leaves, everything that's around us that is alive, even all the little ants I was just looking at on this rock, everything that is moving is alive because it has God in it. Because God is the source of life and there is no other source. Satan sure didn't create any life. He's ever created anything. All life comes from him. And I love the way that that, that line is. It says, and the word gave life to everything that was created. There is such life in the word of God. I'm gonna have to stand up because I just feel this so strong to tell you this. I have a word for you, for somebody tonight concerning this, concerning the power of the word in your life. I, I have to share this word for someone tonight that is dealing with a situation that just seems dead. Maybe it's circumstantial. It's, it is so hopeless. It just is, is the same as dead. Maybe it's a relationship that's the same as dead. Maybe it's your faith that's the same as dead. But the Lord told me to come to you tonight and to tell you this. Hold on to your word. Now, I'm, I mean, we've talked about this before in different ways through the past few months. But no, tonight it seems different. I've got to tell you this. I've got to tell you to hold on with a tenacity and a determination like you've never had before because you're going to have to have it to get through this. But if you will hold on and never let go of the word that God has given you, you will see the fulfillment of it come to pass. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. And I'm telling you, there's such, the, the, the word I heard to tell you was, there's such power in the word that it brings life to everything around it, that hears it, that receives it. The word will raise the dead in that situation. The Lord told me to remind you of a woman. In fact, I'm going to get back over here to my Bible. He told me to remind you of a woman. I love her. her she's, she's known as the Shunammite woman. And her story is actually found in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. And I've read it so many times because when my daughter Lindsay was a prodigal and when she was gone, I'd, <laughs> I, read this, I read this chapter so much just because I so related to this woman. And some of you do too. And you will, especially when we're finished. Please listen to me all the way out because this word matters for you. Okay. This little Shunammite woman was, the Bible says she was a wealthy woman. And the truth is, she's a woman who feared God. And here's how we know that. Because when Elisha, the prophet, came through her town, she told her husband one day, she said, I want us to build a little room onto the house. 
I want us to put in that room. We're going to put in there a bed and a, a lamp and a table. And um, she said, I, I want us to, to fix this place up for him so that when he's coming through here, he'll stay here with us. Because she said, because I, I perceive he's a holy man. Now, she didn't do that for Elisha just because he was an ordinary man. She did it for Elisha because she knew he was a holy man. So she was drawn to the presence of God in him. So the Bible says that Elisha was so appreciative of her hospitality that one day he comes and he tells Gehazi, he says, Gehazi, I want you to go to this woman and tell her we want to do something just to thank her for what she's done for us. He said, I want you to go and, and tell her what can we do for you? Can, can we uh, put in a good word for you, you know, with the captain of the army or anything? So the Bible says that she came to the door and, and uh, Elisha asked her, we, we just want to bless you somehow. And she says, I don't need anything. So when she walks off, Gehazi, Elisha's servant, looks at uh, Elisha and he says, Elisha, she doesn't have a son. Elisha says, call her back in here. So she comes and she stands at the door and Elisha says, about this time next year, you're going to be holding a son in your arms. Now, you and I have talked about this before because this woman had been so let down by hope. She didn't even want a word of hope. She, she, even, she even heard hope as like a deception. That's why she looks at, at Elisha and she says, oh, don't deceive me like that. Don't get my hopes up. She says, I don't, I don't even want to hope for something like that because I've hoped for it. And I've been so let down. I don't, I don't even want to hope. Don't even say that to me. But the Bible says that about that time next year, she was holding that little boy in her arms. Now, I want you to watch something that happens. Now, the Bible says that one day her son, the promise, her miracle, is out in the field with his father. Something happens to the little boy, and he is stricken with a terrible headache. The dad sends him home. He sits in his mother's lap, and the Bible says he dies. Now, I want you to watch something that happens because it's, it's relevant to you. I love this today when I saw this for you. It just exploded for somebody that's going to be watching tonight. The Bible says she took her boy. She took her miracle. And she took him upstairs to the chamber that she had made for the prophet. It was sort of almost in a place like a secret place that she had with the prophet. And in, in many ways, you can consider it with like the Lord. And she lays that boy down on the bed of the prophet that she had made for him. The Bible says that she turns around and she goes and tells her husband, she says, uh, I'm going to need a, uh, a donkey and a servant. I've got to go get the prophet. And the husband says to her, well, why are you going to get him? It's not a, you know, it's not a holy day. It's not a festival. And I love it because she didn't even take the time to talk to him. She just says, everything's fine. This woman was on a mission. She knew she had to get there and she didn't have time to talk to anybody. And she didn't have time to be delayed by any questions about what was going on. She knew she's got to have a miracle. She goes, takes off on her journey. And the Bible says when Elisha sees her coming afar off, Elisha sends his servant named Gehazi to go to her and say, hey, is everything okay? And the Bible says when she sees Gehazi, she looks at Gehazi and says, everything's fine. I want you just to notice the familiar lessons that we've heard there. I thought that tonight the Lord wants to remind you of some things that you've heard of before, but you need to be reminded again. This woman, number one, she took her promise and laid it on the place of the secret place that she had already given to the Lord in years prior. She had already in the days that she didn't need a miracle, she was sort of storing up her faith for not knowing that she was going to need it on this day. In other words, she had some offering laid aside. She had a gift laid aside. She had something she had already given the Lord in intimacy with him and what she would prepared for him. So she had a place to put her need. Once she laid her need down, the Bible says when her husband and Gehazi come by saying, you know, everything okay? Every, everything's fine. You know why? Because she wasn't going to talk to people that wouldn't understand her faith or her urgency. I felt like I was supposed to tell you tonight don't waste your time talking to people who don't understand your faith. Don't waste your time trying to explain your words from God with people who don't even know what you're talking about and won't believe it anyway. Jesus talked about it like this. He said, don't cast your pearls before swine. There's no need to go talk to people who will not understand your language. And the, sometimes the enemy just tries to send them to discourage your faith and make you just give up and make you feel like the fool for believing it. 
<clears throat> don't waste your time talking to people like that. Go either don't talk to anybody but God. That's what this woman did. Or go find faith people that understand the language of faith. Otherwise, don't discuss it. I love that. She says, she says to her husband, everything's fine. She says to Gehazi, everything's fine. In other words, I love that too. She's just calling things that are not as though they were because it really wasn't fine. But in her faith and in her eyes, she knew if I can get to the man of God, everything's going to be fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. Everything's fine. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Oh, I want you to, I need, you know what? This next part is so significant. I've got to just read it to you. The Bible says when this woman reached Elisha, it says in verse 27 of 2 Kings 4, New Living Translation. But when she came to the man of God at the mountain, she fell to the ground before him and caught hold of his feet. Gehazi started trying to push her aside. But Elisha says, now, wait a minute. He says, she's troubled. And I don't know what's going on. And the woman says, that I, did I ask you for a son? She said, didn't I tell you not to deceive me and don't get my hopes up? Then Elisha says to Gehazi, Gehazi, get ready and get my staff and go. Don't talk to anybody. Go quickly and lay the staff on the child's face. And the, But the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and you live yourself, I will not go home unless you go with me. And the Bible says, so Elisha returned with her. Watch this, my dear friend. First of all, she tells people, I ain't got time to talk to you. I got to get to the man of God. The Bible says when she gets to the man of God, watch please. She grabs hold of his ankles. She grabs hold of his feet and she will not let him go. And even when Gehazi was trying to push her aside, Elisha's like, just leave her alone. Something's going on here. And when, when Elisha discerns what's going on, it's her son. I love this. Elisha says, Gehazi, you go and take my staff and take care of this. You know, go take care of, go put this on her son's face. She says, I'm telling you right now. She says, basically, Gehazi won't do. Gehazi won't do. I didn't come here for Gehazi. I didn't come here for anybody else. I didn't come here for a servant. I didn't come. I have come here for you. And I've grabbed hold of your ankles. And she said, as surely as the Lord lives and as surely as I live, I will not leave this place unless you go with me. Come on. And the Bible says that Elisha went with her. And when they got to the house, Elisha, the Bible says that Elisha went up to the chamber that she had built for him. Watch, it's that secret place that she had built for him. And the Bible says when she got in there, she sh that he shut the door and he laid down on top of her son, put his eyes on his eyes, his hands on his hand, his mouth on his mouth. And the Bible says suddenly his body begins to be warm and the boy is resurrected. What am I trying to tell you tonight? I'm trying to tell you that I believe the Lord is telling you your miracle that you have to have. You need to find that place right now, that place of sacrifice that you've already built for the Lord in the past, your place of prayer, your intimacy with God, your secret place. It may be an offering. It may be a memorial. It may be a place of prayer that you've known with God in the past. Go take this thing. When Lindsay was gone, I remember I went down to the ramp over and over for actually for a, year, for a couple of years. And at night I would just go in the spirit, in my spirit, I would just lay her down on that altar as though she was, because she was spiritually dead. And I would just say, God, this is a place that we built for your glory. This is your house that we built for you. I would just lay her on that altar and I would grab hold of what they call the horns of the altar and determine in my mind, I am not letting you go, God. I am not letting you go until you come home with me and raise my daughter from the dead. Come on, my dear friend. I felt the Lord told me to tell you, lay this thing down on the altar that you built for the Lord of intimacy. Don't talk to anybody else that does not have faith. Cut them off and don't talk to them right now. I thought the Lord told me to tell you, lay hold of the altar, lay hold of the horns of the altar, lay hold of the feet of Jesus like the Shunammite woman did <clears throat> and say, I'm not going to let you go. And I mean, I love that because she said, I'm not going home with Gehazi because sometimes other people won't do. Your best friend won't do because they can't help you. 
Even sometimes your husband won't do because he can't he bring, the, bring something to life either. Sometimes your mother, if sometimes it's the cl people closest to you, they won't do. Sometimes even the pastor, the minister, I didn't come for a person. Gehazi won't do. I've got to have God. And I'm not going to let you go until you go home with me and bring this thing to life. You say, Karen, how long will it take? I don't know, but you got to stay there until it comes. You got to stay there. You got to stay there like Jacob did in the 32nd chapter of Genesis. I got to get up. I feel the Lord. In the second, 32nd chapter of Genesis, the Bible says that Jacob had to have a miracle with his family. And the Bible says he just stayed up all night long and he wrestled with God and he wrestled with God. And the Bible says that even at one point, the, the, even the, the man he was wrestling with, the Lord himself said, just let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. That's the kind of tenacity I believe the Lord is asking me to tell you tonight he wants from you. He wants you to hold on to your word. Don't be moved by what you saw this week. Don't be moved by what looks like no answer to prayer. Don't be moved by what you heard. Don't be moved by the text she sent you or he sent you. Don't be moved by what the doctors told you this week. Don't be moved by the job report. You be moved by the word. I'm only moved by the word. I'm only moved by the word. I'm holding on to my word and I'm not letting it go for anybody. People say you're crazy. They can just say, they can just think you're crazy. They thought that Shunammite woman was crazy too, probably when she was at Elisha's feet holding on to his ankles. Oh, I, I feel something to tell you. It's in the <clears throat> book of Mark. What's in, I think, three of the Gospels. There was another little woman that looked crazy. The Bible says that she had been sick 12 years. And somebody needs healing right now. I feel this as I'm speaking it right now in Jesus' name. This little woman had been sick 12 years and spent everything she had on doctors. And the Bible says that one day she heard that Jesus was walking down. I bet he was walking down a road about like this, a little dirt road somewhere outside of Jericho or wherever it was. I don't know. I just know he was on his way to Jairus' house. And he's walking down the road just like we're doing. And the woman said within herself, if I can get to him, if I can just touch the clothes he's wearing, I know I'll be made whole. Doctors have not helped me. I don't have any more money. But if I can get to him, I know, I know I'll be whole. You know what? I'm going to sing you a song. Years ago, I used to sing this song. And I love this message because it's her story. And another, another name for Jesus, another name for Jesus is the word. So I want you to listen to this little song, okay? Let's walk down the road just like he did together. Come on. It says, One day the word came walking down the road On his way to Jared's house And a certain woman with an issue of blood She heard that he was healing and doing good So she said with her mouth if I can touch his clothes, I know I will, I know I shall be whole. So she crowded through the crowd, ever so bold. And when she touched him, she was made whole. Cause she laid hold on the word, she laid hold on the word. And it worked for her, <clears throat> yes it worked for her. She laid hold on the word, she laid hold on the word, and it worked for her. She was made whole, watch, the word turned about to see in the crowd. Who touched me, who touched me, he said. The little woman now healed, trembling fell before him, and she told him of the truth and what she did. Now he said to her, he called her daughter. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. 
He said, go, go in peace and don't worry anymore. You just go your way and continually be whole. Because she laid hold on the word. She laid hold on the word and it worked for her. Oh, yes, it worked for her. Because she laid hold on the word. She laid hold on the word and it worked for her. She was made whole. My friend, that word is as alive today for you as it was for that woman on that dusty road 2,000 years ago. He is as real, he is as living, and he is as sure for you as he was for her. My sweet friend, grab hold of the word today like the Shunammite woman did when she held on and said, I'm not going until you go with me. Hold on like Jacob did when he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Reach out through the crowd. The little woman pressed through the crowd of everybody's opinion and everybody's hindrance and said, he's my last hope. I'm going to touch him. And when I do, I know I'm going to be whole. My friend, he is moving right where you are right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, strengthen my friend. I thank you that your word is living. It is powerful. It is sure. God, I pray for my front porch friend right now. In Jesus' name, I declare healing in her body. From the top of her head to the sole of her feet. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray peace comes to her mind. I pray strength comes to her body. I pray renewed faith comes in her to believe for the prodigal, Lord. I pray, God, that those that have been discouraged in their hope would be encouraged by your promise. I thank you that you have never failed one and you're not starting with us. I thank you, God, that you are living and strong and sure. And you will make a way where there seems to be no way. Financially, God, make a way. I give you praise, Father. You've done it before and you'll do it again. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. We don't know how, we don't know when, but you'll do it again in Jesus' name. God, go awaken the prodigal tonight. Stir their heart. Bring them home, oh God, in Jesus' name. My friend, he's with you right now. I hope you can sense his presence. I believe your body's being healed. I believe your peace has come. I want you to comment below and let me know what God is doing. Please tell me. Tell me what you're sensing in your spirit. Leave me your prayer request. All of us are praying together. We're one huge prayer chain. I love reading your comments and seeing how y'all just pray for each other. I can't answer them all, but no, I'm just reading through as many as I can. And I'm just, I'm praying for you daily. All right. And your comment is your link of faith to agree with us. All right. So make sure you comment so that we can lift these prayers up every day. God is here. Hold on to your word. I love you, my friend. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.